would put your hands together and give a warm welcome to our moderator, Brandon Brown. <laughs> All right. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming here today. Uh, thank you to everybody who's joining us online. Uh, my name is Brandon Brown. I'm the course director here at Full Sail for the Mobile Device Deployment class. I'm also part of the final project uh, group in the Web Design Development degree. Uh, today, we're talking uh, with some of the leaders from the Orlando tech industry. Um, so uh, without further ado, let me introduce all these wonderful people. Um, first here is Jeremy Privet. Uh, he's one of the uh, main organizers for the Orlando devs community here uh, in Orlando. Um, also one of the PHP organizers also here in Orlando. <laughs> that might be a theme today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next to him, we have Oric Davis. Uh, he is one of the leaders uh, of Orlando Tech Association. Uh, next to him, we have Caitlin McKenzie. Uh, she is the uh, community manager at NeoReach, uh, also heavily involved with the Orlando devs community here in Orlando. Uh, and also, we have uh, Matt Lavoie. He is the senior user experience designer over at Power DMS. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for giving our time here today. All right, so I'm actually going to start with uh, Orit. Really, oh. sorry to throw you <laughs> right up front there. Right. Uh, so Orlando Tech, uh, the association, uh, is really finding some great steam these days. Uh, could you give us a little background of what the Orlando Tech Association is and why why here in Orlando? Yeah, absolutely. So we started the Orlando Tech. Our, our history really traces back about four years ago with the Orlando Tech Meetup, and at that time there weren't any outlets for. Um, designers, developers to really demo and feature what they were building, the latest and greatest. And we started this, this silly little tech meetup and had maybe 10 people show up to the first one. And half of the people that showed up were the founders that were there demoing their own products. Mm -hmm. right? But what we saw is we were very consistent and month after month we saw that group grow. Uh, and now four years later, we're one of the largest startup and tech focused meetup groups now in the Southeast. A little over 3,800 members to that group, over 200 uh, people attending every single month, and it's a full stack event. Designers, developers, um, the creatives, and the business community all kind of centered in one place. And we, we took a step back, though, and said, what more can we do for the community? How can we really push um, what's happening here forward? And that, for us, was the genesis of the Orlando Tech Association. Um, and we, three broad areas, we do events and programs that really highlight what's happening here. We advocate and bring in products and services that uh, employers that people want to see happen here in Orlando. So Lyft and Uber are examples of some of the companies that we've worked with. And then the final piece for us is promotion. So how do we serve as a bullhorn for all the really amazing things that are happening in this community? And so we have uh, we cover you know the news, the events, we blog, we video it, we record it, and we literally you know stand on the mountaintop and yell out how great Orlando is as a community. <laughs> awesome. Um, for uh, Jeremy and Caitlin, uh, the Orlando Devs community has really taken over in the, uh, the sense that Slack is also taking over in our industry. Um, can you tell us what that's been like with being able to engage with the community just at the flip of a switch, pretty much? So help me with TJ's last name. How do you pronounce it? It's not TJ. No, 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 TJ, the guy who oh. actually started the Slack. Krasinski. Krasinski. Krasinski? Yeah, Krasinski. okay. Yeah. So TJ Krasinski actually started the original like Slack group, and it's kind of just exploded from there. Um, we, a couple, of year, a couple of years ago, Sergio and I had the idea to start a um, kind of soft skills focused event in Orlando because we felt like not a lot of people were covering that subject. So that's kind of how the Orlando devs meetup itself started, but I interacting with the community the way that we do inside of the Slack channel has been amazing. Like it's been helping so many people find so many different types of opportunities, both being able to speak in front of groups uh, at meetup events, uh, being able to find jobs inside of the job listings uh, areas and things like that. But it, I mean, just that Slack channel has gotten insane. Like there's what, almost 800 members in it Yeah, now? there's almost 800 in there. <laughs> awesome. And 300, about 300 active members on that Slack. Yeah. And they're all developers, except for me. 
<laughs> and, and me. <laughs> and me as well. So <laughs> There's a lot of non-developers. Who, who are you people? <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually one of the, uh, the strong suits of the Orlando uh, web community, not just tech. Um, there are a lot of people who aren't the people coding. They're not maybe the people deciding the, the, the interfaces, the colors. Um, it is the semblance of a true community. And it seems like Slack was part of those missing ingredients. Uh, Orlando has many meetups going on for specifically our industry. Um, and all of a sudden, Orlando devs just kind of, I don't want to say ate them all up, but now you're the big dogs in town with <laughs> the meetups. Um, how, how has that been, managing that uh, almost sudden influx of people who want to be involved with the community, and now all of a sudden, like, you have Slack, and you need to push meetups, and wow, you have all, you have this giant voice, basically, in the Orlando community. It's been a lot of fun, actually. Um, I came from organizing a bunch of meetups at Cloudspace to just organizing one, which is Orlando Devs, mm -hmm. and watching that grow over the fact that we're about to have our fourth one in a couple weeks, and it's almost 100 people who attend is unbelievable. I've never seen a developer-focused meetup have that many people show up on a consistent basis. Honestly, I think Caitlin has kind of been our secret ingredient, so to speak. <laughs> like, when, when Sergio and I got together and decided that we were going to do this thing, like, the very first thought we had was like, okay, Caitlin does a ton of these in, on, like, the university side of town, and we just wanted someone like that that could help us really kind of drive this thing forward because, like, I've got a little bit of experience with marketing, but like Caitlin has this stuff on lock. So <laughs> we, we, we really wanted to tap into her experience and expertise just kind of organizing this thing, and I think it's really, really paid off. Thank you. Uh, Thank for those online who caught the university side of town, uh, the way that Orlando is laid out, uh, we wound up being pretty spread out, actually. That would be a good 20, 30 minute drive. So we kind of do wind up with these little pockets of communities. Uh, and Orlando Dev, especially uh, leaning on bringing more things online, has really been a bridge uh, between all those groups. Um, so tell me uh, a little bit about the format that you're planning on using for these meetups. I know you're uh, very popular with the lightning talks. We have kind of made the decision that we want to experiment with the format a little bit. Like the very first meetup, what we did was uh, two longer talks and then a handful of lightning talks in between. And then I think we used that again for the second meetup. And then yep. uh, the most recent one, we decided, hey, we want to try an all lightning talk format. And I think that went over really well. Um, mm -hmm. The I think the next meetup, we're currently planning on doing uh, two longer talks with the lightning talks. Yeah. in between again, um, but we're experimenting with workshops in March. Uh, we've got a salary negotiation workshop that's happening the second Wednesday in March. I think that's March 9th. Yep. Um, uh, a friend of mine who wrote a book on salary negotiation is coming down from Jacksonville to do a 45-minute-ish workshop on like how to approach salary negotiations, the things that you should avoid, what you should do during the interview, things of that nature. So I think that's going to be a pretty amazing event. That's fantastic, especially the salary negotiation. I feel like some soon-to-graduate students might be interested in hearing more about that. Um, so we're talking a lot about the meetups, the organizers. Uh, Matt, you actually speak at uh, some of these uh, meetups and actually conferences. Um, how'd you get there? How'd you start? How did you start actually engaging to speak with these? Um, well, so I started speaking at conferences just because uh, I don't know years ago. Just because I wanted to get out there. A really good way to learn is to teach, um, and it's. I think one of the things that's really interesting, and I think it's a, a common theme in the meetup world, is is sort of that desire to be able to inspire and teach people what you know because, you know, and learn from each other because there's no way you can do everything. And if you can inspire or equip other people to do great things, uh, you can have an influence, you know, much greater than you could ever do on your own. Um, 
And so I think the biggest thing that I've done with the meetup world is about a year and a half ago when I started the downtown UX meetup. So in Orlando, we had a UX meetup, but they actually met up in Altamont. And uh, I went to it, I tried to get them to move it to downtown, I just couldn't make it out there. Um, but I ended up speaking with that guy and just being like, hey, what if I just made a second meetup and we met in Orlando? And uh, he was cool with it, he gave me a lot of great advice on starting a meetup. And so we started that uh, about a year and a half ago and now we consistently have, I mean, 25 to 50 people uh, showing up every single month. Uh, every third Tuesday to learn about UX, to talk about UX, and we've built a really cool community. Um, and we actually thrive more, uh, talking about Slack, we, we thrive more in the Orlando Designer Slack group, which is a little bit lesser known, uh, but there's a, still a couple, like 300 people in there, um, and we're pretty active in there, uh, less so than the developer one for sure, but uh, it's a good community as well. Um, I really love uh, experimentation as well, as you guys are doing with the Orlando Devs Meetup. Um, so the very first uh, downtown UX Meetup is, is the UX Meetup we run. The very first Ducks Meetup we had was uh, let's get together and design our meetup. So kind of coming at it from a human-centered design problem where our customers are the people that are attending, but also we are all user experience designers. How can we get together and actually design this meetup to be something that we want to attend, uh, something that we care about, something that we're gonna get something out of? Because um, people aren't going to come to a meetup where they aren't benefiting from it, where they aren't learning, where aren't, they aren't getting some value out of it. So that was really cool. And now we've uh, been going down a series of workshop style meetups where it's uh, teaching a topic and then actually having a workshop where we're doing the thing we just learned about. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, so this topic of workshops keeps popping up. Uh, it's especially for our students, it's kind of tough sometimes to just sit and listen to somebody. It's easier to learn and appreciate what they're talking about when you're you know, in the trenches also building with them. Um, do you have any examples of some type of the, the projects or like the type of uh, things that they would be expected to be doing at these workshops? Yeah, so we actually had our last meetup last night um, and uh, we had an awesome guy named Charles Caldwell who is our speaker he works, he's a user experience designer for Nielsen, the TV ratings company. Um, and so he was teaching us the Kano method. So he essentially, uh, we had a skit um, and then you know a PowerPoint, like this is what it is. And then everybody actually went through the process of uh, writing down question, like Kano questions and asking each other and using this matrix to sort of identify is this feature that we're asking about a delighter or uh, you know something that's essential to our system or maybe something that people don't like. Um, so it's, it was a really cool exercise and Kano was something I'd never done before and I loved learning about it. It was really fun. It was a great presentation. That is fun. How about the uh, the ODEVs community? What are your what are your goals with the workshop, or at least what do you what type of projects do you see coming into those? Oh man. <laughs> well, I mean, our first one's going to be March 9th, and so that one's on salary negotiation. But we also like to ask the opinions of everybody who comes into our meetups, and we thrive off of what you guys say, and that's how we're structuring each one, the following one, by what you guys say. So the next couple workshops could end up being revolving around. You know, it could be more technical as well, if anybody ever wanted those. But I think for right now, the workshops will be more so focused on uh, soft skills, because in April, we are doing a React hack night. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think right now, we'll focus on soft skill workshops, because those tend to run a little bit longer. They have, mm -hmm. Usually, a lot of people have more questions about it and they want to know more about it, and it's a little tricky to shove a 45-minute talk and a bunch of questions in an actual developer meetup. So doing soft skill workshops seem to be more valuable for you guys to attend that on top of a, a meetup as well. Yeah, the, the, the approach that we're kind of taking is uh, the, the actual meetup itself is more for like short, bursty type topics, uh, things that you can do like quick demos of or like technical talks. Um, or really, really short overviews of soft skill things, and then we're trying to be able to explore in more depth inside the workshops. Awesome. The, so this uh, idea of soft skills has been brought up a few times. Uh, would one of you mind explaining a little bit more uh, what are soft skills? Um, the, the best way that I kind of refer to it is it's all of the stuff that kind of surrounds being a developer that, also, that makes you a good developer. Um, in the community, we focus very, very 
hard on like hard skills, like technical skills, the programming languages you know, things of that nature. But there's all sorts of other things involved in being a good developer, like how well do you communicate with others? How well do you communicate with your superiors, your boss, clients if you're a freelancer? Um, things around freelance, uh, the business aspects of being a developer, like all of those different things are, are kind of what I tend to focus on. So that's, that's kind of my approach to things as far as that goes. Matt, so how about you from the designer side? Yeah. Uh, how, how, how big are uh, our soft skills in your day to day? Oh, I mean, absolutely essential. And even, you know, totally on both sides, it's like, you know, if you have a talk about PHP or if you have a talk about Ember or whatever, I mean, that's only going to benefit so many people. But everybody, whether you're a designer or a developer, a QA, a product owner, uh, in support. You know, there are these skills that we have that help us to actually be effective with each other, uh, being able to communicate with each other, being able to empathize with each other or our customers. Um, one of the things that uh, I really like to do and something that we've spoken about because we, we've done a, a meetup on usability testing, but we encourage not just the designers to be in that session listening to the usability test, but the developers as well because that really helps them to empathize and understand the friction points in the design that uh, customers might be facing. Um, so those are the, like the things that I like to encourage. But yeah, um, also being able to argue with each other and battle with each other. Like, uh, I mean, where I work, we're super passionate people. We fight all the time. We love each other. But we have that skill and that ability to be able to have that conflict when we disagree. And we're only having that conflict because we really care. We really want to get to the best thing at the end of the day. Um, so being able to learn those skills, it's, it's not something they teach you. In I mean, I went to UCF for computer science. They don't teach soft skills there, really. I mean, there's a public speaking class and some things. But like, these are things that you just have to pick up in life. And so they're really important. And uh, that's really cool that you guys are really focusing on those. Great. Um, and or I'm going to guess as an organizer, your day is pretty much all soft skills. You're communicating, <laughs> getting people to just work together. Um, is that the truth? Uh, that's very true. Um, but even with that, though, like we, we place a heavy emphasis on that as well, too. And you know, we, we take things <laughs> from the, the human-centered design and the customer validation and even some of the programs and events that we run. Um, so you look at things like a startup weekend or a weekend launch that we do here in Orlando. Uh, it's very much centered around uh, the customer validation process before you begin building and uh, kind of going out there, getting outside of the building, talking to your customers before you start building. And then when you do start building, going out there um, and taking that feedback to reiterate over the process and continue that process. Like it's a, it's a continual loop. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely place a strong emphasis on that as well too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah thinking about weekend launch as a startup weekend, if you guys yeah. aren't familiar, like essentially in a weekend you design a whole uh, brand new company. Company, yep. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have a great idea, that's wonderful. But if you can't communicate that idea, you're not going to go very far. Yeah. No. <laughs> so that's a, a big part of that weekend. Absolutely. We were actually just talking about uh, an upcoming event that Orlando Tech is involved with uh, at the end of February, uh, Hack the Arena. I'm trying to get some of our students to move over there, um, try that out for pretty much exactly these reasons. Uh, there's only so much that as a classroom we can bring in the team environment. Uh, that would be a whole new experience. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, happy to talk about that. So at the end of this month, so on February 27th on Saturday, we're hosting Hack the Arena. So it's the first sports and entertainment hackathon that we're doing here locally in partnership with the Orlando Magic and in partnership with the Orlando Solar Bears as well too. And it's really, uh, the, the goal of there is to really help drive innovation in the sports and entertainment industry, whether it's fan engagement, virtual reality, um, data analytics, gamification, you name it. Um, there's several different challenges. The really awesome thing about participating in events like this that are part of the community is that you as students, you as kind of aspiring um, professionals get to work alongside people that have been in the industry now for years. Right? And you get to learn from their, pick up their skill sets, their workflow, how they do things, how they think. Uh, and so it's a really great chance for you to like, gain some real world experience. And a lot of times what we find is when students attend events like Weekend Launch or Start Weekend or are involved heavily within the community, um, this is the direct pipeline to get, get you hired. Mm -hmm. um, it is like the, that, that's it. It's really about all who you know. And coming to these events, like all of the CEOs, all the founders, all of the dev teams that you want to meet, all go participate in all these events. So if you want to get hired and stay here in Orlando, like this is an absolute like must. Um, like 
get out there right now and sign up for every single meetup that we're talking about like, <laughs> right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, on, on that note, um, how can they, how could the students or everybody online listening also, um, how can they find out about the schedules? How can they find out the updates for all these, these different meetups? Yeah, I, one of the easiest ways, I think just about all of us list our meetups on meetup.com, right? Mm -hmm. So as the name implies, yeah. and on there you can literally just find the full on, you type in the topic of the subject, the programming language, um, there's a meetup group here, local meeting here locally for it. Uh, so much so that I say that there are over 100 events that happen in a month, and those events only happen Monday through Thursday, right? So if you think about that, that's two or three events that are happening per night, if not more, on every single topic you can think about, right? So that's a great source. Um, Greg Pollock, who's the founder of Code School, runs a really awesome newsletter that goes out monthly that curates all of the events. Uh, I think it's just techevents.us. Yep. Really great resource there. We run a weekly newsletter uh, that we cover. We curate like the six events you should attend uh, just on orlandotech.org. Um, we have that listed there. And uh, I, I think between those there's sources, a on there too. There, we have a calendar on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely resources out there for you to figure out and get plugged in. I always recommend pick two or three for the month and like make those your target areas. And as you kind of figure out like what you're really interested, like I'm really interested in UX and UI, well then the Ducks Meetup Group should be your priority, right? Or you're more interested in Ruby on Rails or backend technology, uh, then go to those specific meetup groups. Awesome. Yeah. So one of the things that you also touched on was that if you want to stay here in Orlando, um, these are the things to do, the places to go, people to meet. Um, being so involved in the Orlando tech industry, uh, is there anything you can say to speak specifically why they should stay here? And this is kind of for everybody here. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to live in a closet or an actual house? So we'll start, <laughs> start there. Um, this, yeah, this is where the conversation get really fun. Um, do, you, do you want to keep more than 50% of your salary? Like, I mean, uh, Orlando, Florida in general has some really awesome things going for it. Obviously, the cost of living is significantly less here than it is anywhere else. Um, the, the taxes, so, you know, the real world things to start thinking about are also very important as well, too. But the other really great thing that I always pitch about, or what I love about Orlando, it's one of the few cities um, where you can come in and have a direct impact, right? So our city is so young, like no one is ever from, like truly from Orlando. Um, so there's no like, no one's ingrained here, been here for like 50 years, like everyone here is like new to Orlando, right? So you wanna come in and make an impact, you wanna get involved with any of these organizations, like we all have an open door. You're no more than two people away from anyone you wanna meet in Orlando. So whether that's the CEO of XYZ company or the mayor, you're literally two people away from anyone that you want to meet, right? And there's nowhere else, no other city, um, this emerging city where that's possible. Like, you can't do that in New York, you can't do that in the Valley, uh, but you can do that right here in Orlando, right? And we have some really, like, really awesome companies. Those are ready for you. Yes, Good job. I had to hold, hold it in there. You can tell how excited I am. We have some really amazing companies that are here locally that have had, you know, million, a half a billion dollar exits right, like Code School is here in Orlando, Treehouse is there, Pentaho, Unikey. I mean, I can literally go on and on and on about the types of companies that are here, whether hardware, software, healthcare, like whatever you're interested in, it can be found here locally in Orlando. Uh, and part of that, like learning about those is like being engaged with some of the groups that, that are up here. But I, 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 um, I'm not from here, I've been here four years now and I've absolutely fallen in love with everything that Orlando has to offer. Uh, and I can't really see myself being anywhere else. No. Orlando's been, especially in the tech community in general, because I've been in all different sides of the tech community, been in the startup side, and then I got involved in tech over a year ago, and I've been heavily submerged in tech ever since. And it's been a family to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No joke. I mean, I can text anybody. I can message anybody. I allow anybody to add me on Facebook, whatever. You know, it's, it's literally, you can come in here knowing absolutely nobody, walk into a meetup, say hi to the right people, be nice to the right people, and from there on out, you can rely on them for anything. I mean, I got laid off, and everybody all of a sudden just showed so much support for it. I literally was, I never felt sad about anything or unsure or confused because I knew that I had other people who were checking in on me all the time, making sure I love my new job, making sure I, if I needed any references, if I needed any help, and that was all within the tech community. 
And all it starts is just going to an event and just start talking to people. You know, you're hanging out with your fellow tech people. I mean, you all have interests that are all involved and it's so easy to just walk up to anyone here in Orlando. And I've lived in all different cities. I've moved around a lot. And I've been back in Orlando for the last three and a half years now. And I've never seen such an open community. And we're friendly. Yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then really, I, I would love to see like a show of hands. Like how many of you have been to a meetup here in Orlando? See, we need to see wow. all, so, yeah, so all your hands. I, I, this is like my challenge to everyone here is like <laughs> leave here and make that a priority. Like find a meetup and attend one. Um, and we've got some really, really awesome ones here in town. And then the follow-up question to that is like, how many of you use Slack? There's okay. an ODEVs t-shirt right There's here. There's an ODEVs, yeah. <laughs> so the other, other challenge I'll throw out there as well too is like get on one of these Slack channels, whether it's the Orlando Tech Slack, the ODEV Slack, the Design Slack, um, find a way. And the reason for that is like this is like everyone in the community instantly becomes accessible. Mm-hmm. Like instantly, right? So it might be hard for some of you to make it downtown or make it out to the other, other side of town or what, what have you. Um, but if you get on Slack, literally like you can get in touch with everyone in the community, right? Um, and you can follow the conversation, you can see what's happening, you can follow the trends, you can see who's hiring and what's going on and all the great gossip and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, and follow all the, the crazy like gifs that all of us post on our Slack channels. Oh my god. Right? <laughs> um, I know devs, I think it's all fucking gifs. But yeah, everyone, yeah, a uh, whole other sidebar conversation there. Um, but yeah, I, go on meetup.com, find out one of the Slack channels, just sign up, follow the conversation, and slowly start inch, inching your way into getting involved. Right? That's, that's my challenge for everyone in the audience right now, and online. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Going back to why you shouldn't leave Orlando, because um, I really love Orlando, and I talk with a lot of people that are thinking about you know, San Francisco, or LA, or New York, or wherever, and you know, if that's your passion, that's your dream, follow it. But I want to really reiterate what Orit said, because he took the words right out of my brain. Um, and like, you can have an impact here in Orlando. Like, we are in a cool place. We're in a, a puberty of technology, like, <laughs> industry. Um, where we're growing up, we're finding out who we are as a, a tech industry. Uh, one of the reasons I started the UX meetup was because I was trying to hire a UX designer. Uh, and, you know, our community just wasn't there. And I was actually terrified because the tech community was blowing up so much and so many people are making technology and like the you know OTA is just getting so huge and every month you know you go to the Orlando Tech Meetup and you're just like all of these people are here making technology and they aren't user experience designers amongst them and I was like we need to have <laughs> user experience to come with all of the people making t- technology because I want Orlando to be known not just for producing great and I'm like producing so much technology. I want us to produce like the most well-designed, useful, beautiful, effortless technology that is just gonna put us on the map. Um, so I've never told you any of this. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, I've gotten yeah. to know you so much better now. <laughs> um, but I mean, that was a huge part of why I was like, I can't find somebody to hire. There isn't a community. And there's so many, like, since we started Ducks, like, there's so many people that have joined us that aren't user experience designers. There is uh, somebody who came to the meetup last night who's a student who uh, is going to school for psychology. I was just really interested in user experience. We've had people that are uh, physical therapists, just really curious in user experience. Healthcare UX is a huge, cool industry, and it's really, I don't know, it's really exciting. But here in Orlando, you every day are shaping the future of Orlando, and you can't do that in these other places that are a little bit more established. You're um, a tiny person in a big <laughs> world. That's all you yeah. are when you go there. When you go here, you're like, hey, look what I did, and everybody's like, holy crap, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, you wanna do a design hack night? Do it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> you see a gap in, uh, man, there's this meetup I wish was happening. Start it. Like, that is when I started the, the, the UX meetup. And now we've, we've had so many people come, and we've built such a cool community and had so many amazing speakers. Uh, y- you can make a huge impact here. Um, I love Orlando, and I would definitely support uh, continuing to grow it.
Yeah. I, I've moved around a lot. Like I started my career uh, in Alabama of all places and moved to Colorado. I worked at a Denver and Boulder. Uh, I lived in Arizona. I worked out of Phoenix, um, just all sorts of different places. And when I moved to Florida, um, to be perfectly honest, I hated it. <laughs> but it was because I hadn't really immersed myself in kind of the culture of the tech community at that point. Like I didn't enjoy being here because I didn't know anybody. I didn't like feel like I belonged anywhere. And I'm gonna, with your permission, I'm gonna get a little dark for a second. Um, um, I actually have uh, a handful of what people would commonly describe as mental illnesses. Um, no, I'm actually being serious. I have like fully diagnosed ADHD, uh, anxiety disorder, and I'm type two bipolar. So combine that with being introverted and it's a little difficult to kind of, first of all, sit up here and do this thing in front of you people. <laughs> and, and beyond that, it's, it's difficult to really get involved in a community. And, and the Orlando tech community honestly was the most welcoming and inviting place that I've ever been in. And it, it has honestly changed my life. So I cannot, I cannot express the amount of gratitude that I have for like people like Arette and the other people that like run uh, the meetups because they helped me get involved and be involved in this community. And it's why I am trying to give back and I'm so passionate and love it so much, so. So that's actually one of the things that I also personally love about Orlando and the community here. Um, a lot of times you think about these meetups that are happening in some office or you know some some place that work is done. Um, I've gone to some of these meetups and played flag football. You're yeah. you're just yeah. with your community. You're meeting people. You're having fun. A lot of them happen you know downtown. There's a lot of establishments down there that developers like to go to. Um, so there's kind of a meetup for everybody and every personality type. You don't have to be stuck in a room with people you don't know if you're not comfortable with that. You can look around and find something that fits something uh, or would make you more comfortable to attend. Um, it's, yeah, exactly what you were saying. It's a fantastic part of Orlando. Um, so talk about meetups a lot. Uh, we're starting to bring in, uh, we happen to have, you know, the Orlando Convention Center and these really big venues that bring in larger events. Um, we have some people up here who have been involved or heavily involved in bringing some of those into town. Um, I'm going to call you out again, Orit. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, um, do you want to talk about some of the, the larger events that you've come in that maybe are, you know, too big to call a meetup? Yeah, I, I mean, there, there have been several, and I think we really have, we have a, a bunch of these anchor tech events that come into town. Um, and everything from like the fortune like events like the Gartner symposiums where it's just like above everyone's pay grade. Um, but then all the way though to other events like Orlando IX, right? So this whole this week of this interactive experience between gaming, um, between tech and there's panels of speakers that happen. And so that was the first year that this event has happened. Uh, then we have uh, things like Orlando Tech Week, which is this community-driven week of meetups, speakers, showcase of what's happening here locally in town. Um, and once again, just great chances to get plugged in, to get a snapshot of what's happening in this community. Uh, the next one is coming up uh, April 18th for Orlando Tech Week. Um, we're going to be launching our website tomorrow for that, but just orlandotechweek.com if you want to learn more. That's coming up. Uh, Orlando IX will probably be again sometime in the fall in October, so be on the lookout for that as well, too. And you, we have everything from the bigger bar camps to Code Camp to uh, SQL Saturdays. Um, and, and these events you know, bring in 500, 1,000, 3,000 plus people um, all here into town, right? So um, really just great experience overall. Fantastic. So uh, one of the things that you mentioned in there, uh, sort of the Orlando IX, it was more than just web. Uh, I'm feeling that we have a lot of web people in here, but Full Sail as a school uh, has many types of different degrees. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of game degrees. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about user experience and how you know, maybe when we mentioned that, we're, we're all thinking startups, applications. Uh, games have a huge side. That is all user experience. Um, how could you help to make that gap between, hey, web people, get these game guys to come in. Um, is there anything that you've been trying to, oh, and this is kind of for everybody up here, um, is there anything you've been trying to push towards to bring in more industries? 
Uh, so I, I guess I will take this. So one of the things that we've been we've been doing is we've been doing uh, like themed verticals for our tech meetup, right? So we'll do one. Uh, so we have one actually this Thursday. Uh, we're doing ed techs, so education technology. We've done one before in the past with there's health tech where we do. We've done hardware, um, and all in attempts to kind of bring in some of these other siloed communities into the bigger fold of the Orlando tech community overall. And, and so those are some of the things that we've done um, in order to kind of bring in some of these outside groups. Uh, and our gaming community here is like massive. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so yeah. there's a group called Indie, Indie Nomicon. If you're a gamer here, if you, want to, if you love the indie gaming scene, like that is the place for you to be. Mm -hmm. uh, indie, indie Nomicon, uh, look into that. And it's basically a collection of independent gaming studios and every month they get together and feature three, four games. I give a presentation and then do like a live demo of the game. Uh, and so we work very closely with them as well too to in, in things like Tech Week, our tech meetup, to bring in that gaming community to the broader tech community as a, as a whole, right? So we want to big the, the build, build up the big pie, right? Um, and I'm sure everyone else kind of has some other thoughts on how to loop in some other groups as well too. Um, with our, like we're trying to figure out how to, so Indianomicon also does these massive Hack weekends. Mm -hmm. That is one thing Kunal is amazing yeah. at, mm -hmm. and he's working on making it where I think he has one coming up in the summer, possibly. He's trying to make it a little bit more frequent yeah. with his gaming ones, but also too on the developer side and how to intertwine it uh, with our React Hack Night that mm -hmm. we're going to be doing, which is actually going to be during Tech Week. Little plug in right there. <laughs> yeah, um, it's coming. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't <laughs> fully announced the date, but yeah. Um, with that, we're also allowing React Native to come into play. So anybody who has mobile background, a lot of the gaming <coughs> world has a mobile background as well. They also have a little bit of UI involved. And um, we're trying to figure out a way to structure our judging for the hack night to allow everybody who wants to get involved in React some way or another. So React Native is how we're going to be introducing hopefully getting a little bit more of the gamer community involved as well. Yeah, one of the things that I love is when you get the multiple disciplines together. A lot of times at hackathons, you don't see, like it's, oh wow, we got a room full of developers and no designers. Like a lot of times I'm the only designer. Actually, the last hackathon I participated, I did nothing but develop. I worked on a team by myself and I, I finished. <laughs> I'm super proud of that. Um, but uh, yeah, so one of my favorite communities that I've just thought of as we're kind of talking about the different divides is uh, Code for Orlando, which is another amazing oh, yeah. meetup group here. Um, and it's basically a group of civic-minded people. And you don't have to be a developer to join them. Um, you just have to be somebody who cares about Orlando, right? Um, so their mission is to make Orlando an open data city, um, big data. And essentially, each of their meetups is a hackathon, but you're collaborating together People are writing code, people are designing, people are creating icons, people are uh, thinking about release strategies, or people are talking to um, an animal shelter to understand their needs so that we can build an app for them to get more animals adopted, or whatever it might be. There's a lot of really cool stuff that they're doing. I definitely recommend checking them out as well. It's a great cross-functional meetup, uh, where it's not just developers. Yeah. Cool. So with the cross-functional talk, uh, I was going to touch on a topic that we were discussing earlier a little bit. Um, Orlando is not just startups and applications. Um, there's very, or th there's large amounts of job opportunities in very different industries here in Orlando. Um, have you uh, worked at all with any of these industries? Has maybe help push more people towards them? So say like health or even the simulation industry that's here in town. Um, I know Disney has been throwing a lot of money at those companies lately. It's all user experience, um, so they need developers. Um, have you have you worked with those groups at all? Um, not those groups in particular, but um, there's always you know anytime you're an organizer for a meetup, people reach out to you and say, hey, I've got this job, I'm looking for these people. Um, so that happens all the time, and uh, we have to be very careful as organizers because we don't want to spam our attendees. So mm -hmm. we try to not you know just be like, all right, well we'll email 500 people for you because that's not what we're that's not helping the community. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no. So uh, what I say to anybody that reaches out to me about that is, hey, come to the meetup. Uh, there's always uh, time for community announcements at my meetup. So if you have anything to 
share. Hey, there, I'm starting a new meetup. Hey, I, you know, I'm trying to hire a job or whatever. And uh, so our last meetup was last night. Somebody came, uh, they, somebody messaged me on LinkedIn and I said, come to the meetup. So they came to the meetup, and it, funnily enough, they have come to my meetup before, um, and they, after our meetup, like literally, she did like three job interviews at the end of the meetup, like after the meetup ended. It was, she was like sit down with one person one-on-one -on -one and just like did a quick interview, and then sat down with somebody else and did a quick interview and sat down with somebody, and I was just like blown away. I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like I wanna provide opportunities for the people coming here that are looking for jobs, and the people that need to hire, that are looking you know, to hire people to connect. Um, so that was really beautiful, and that made me happy. I don't know if I quite answered the question, but... <laughs> it's okay, I'll, I'll still take it. <laughs> so, actually, on that note of people getting jobs at these meetups, um, we have students who are going to want jobs. Um, do you have any tips for maybe how they should handle themselves at these meetups? Or, you know, how can they best present themselves to maybe talk to these people to get those jobs? Ooh, that's a good one. I, I think you said the key word right there, which is present. Yes. I think one of the... Uh, best ways to get yourself out there and get yourself known and uh, kind of your face recognized is that one of these meetups like present something that you're working on like mm -hmm. demo a product like give a talk at, at ducks like give a talk at odevs mm -hmm. doesn't matter your stage or your level of experience doesn't matter at all just get on stage and talk about something that you're passionate about yeah. and you know that passion is i always say passion is is contagious right and so there's an employer in, in the crowd and they see how interested you are in a topic, like they'll quickly pick up on that. Um, on yeah, I, I, I highly recommend, um, highly, highly recommend, like just showcase a weekend project that you're working on. I think yeah. it's one of the best ways to, mm -hmm. to get yourself in front of there. Even if you're not the best at speaking and you're gonna be extremely nervous and you're shaking, okay, maybe don't do a lightning talk because it's really hard to cram everything together in five to 10 minutes. But give a longer talk if you, you know, you're kind of a little rough at speaking. But we encourage all of you guys to get up and speak. If you suck at speaking, it's totally okay. I did over a year of four meetups a month. I have seen some speakers. <laughs> but I've also seen a lot of people get hired out of the meetups that I organize as well. And it is an amazing thing when I have somebody who messages me and goes, I used to absolutely suck at speaking. I've spoken a few times at your meetup. I have a book deal now on what I spoke about at your meetup. And then I've had a few other people who have reached back out to me and went, literally every single time I've spoken at your event, I get more confident. And all of a sudden, now I'm able to just talk to anybody. I feel a lot better about talking and now I talk at conferences. Uh, now I've, you know, I talk everywhere. I'm willing to help out anybody who wants help with it. And hearing those six, those little stories makes an organizer extremely happy. I mean, it gives me like all the warm feels. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but we're so easy for you guys to come up and talk. And we try not to circulate the same speakers every single month because we want to open it up for the people who haven't spoke to give you guys the same opportunity the last month had. And we have all sorts of different employers who come to our meetups because I tell everybody the same thing I've done it every single time I'm not gonna blast everybody that is in my meetup every single time someone has a job posting mm -hmm. but if you want to come to my meetup we can give you a quick speaker series last month we literally went all right who all is hiring raise your hand about six seven different people raised their hand including me and with that you're then able to locate that exact person that you should then go up and talk to I don't say bombard them Definitely don't just, you know, circle around them like a whole bunch of hawks, like, hey, I'm about to graduate, I need a job. No, <laughs> talk to them about what they're hiring for. Ask them questions to see if it's even something that you can even do. Then, if it is something that you're interested in, go in from there and be like, you know, I'm really passionate about this. Don't just say that I'm a JavaScript developer. There's a whole lot of different avenues of that. Just say, you know, I'm really passionate about this and da 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 and then, they're gonna then wanna talk to you further about it. It's a, you know, little smaller questions like that to somebody who's hiring and at a meetup, they're open to talking to you because they went there because they're hiring is a perfect avenue for you guys and hack nights too. We like to watch your code. We like to see what you do. And we're gonna hire you if we like your stuff at a hack night. It's a perfect opportunity for a company to hire. <laughs> That's why we're doing one. <laughs> the, the advice that I commonly give people is be helpful. Um, and when you come to these meetups and you present on something that's uh, something that you've learned that other people might not necessarily know, that's being helpful at a scale that is very, very likely to get you noticed by the right people. Um, 
And then when you're helpful, if you actually help someone through some kind of problem that they're having, they're more likely to remember who you are. Um, so, so that's that's. I mean, if you can go to any of these events and find out the kind of problems that people are ha uh, people are having, like even if it's like hiring managers, if it's people that want to know some topic that you might happen to have some experience in, that you can then put together a presentation or a speaking like uh, event on, do that. Just try to be as helpful as possible to as many people around you as you can. That's that's in my opinion the best way to get noticed. Oh, and speaking of which. For our ODEVs meetup that's happening March 3rd, we are still looking for speakers. So you might want to go on our meetup page. Mm -hmm. There's two little links on there for both long talks and lightning talks. You might want to sign up. Awesome. So one of the things I'm hearing a lot, and I want to reinforce it a little bit, uh, be nice, be helpful, and present. Um, I feel like you can't really get any better than that if you take anything out of everything they're saying up here. Just do those three things. It sounds like you're going to have a great career ahead of you. Um, for uh, these students who are looking to network and get jobs, um, how much of the same attitude do you think they should approach these situations as they would an interview? Is it, you know, should they ask the same type of questions or should they maybe back off of that, keep things more casual? Um, what, what are your opinions on that? In an in interview scenario, the, the interesting thing uh, about the approach that I generally recommend is at the same time that the company is interviewing you, you're also interviewing them because it has to be a fit both ways for it to be an effective placement. Um, so you also need to come in and show that you have an understanding of what they do, um, what kind of business that they're into like how you can contribute um, and, and being able to ask good questions about the business, about um, the things that you would be doing on a daily basis. Like you, you, you do have to be very inquisitive. You have to approach all of these conversations with the understanding that it's a two way street. Like you're vetting them as much as they're vetting you. Um, so definitely be confident and knowledgeable in your skills and be able to come across and not be arrogant about it necessarily, but communicate confidently what you do know and be willing to admit what you don't. Um, the, the most damning thing, I think, in an interview, like as a hiring manager, is when someone claims to know something and then they're quizzed about it and then they don't know anything about it. Um, so don't do that, first of all. I've disqualified so many candidates uh, just on that point alone. Please don't. Um, Admit you don't know something. Yeah, please, please, <laughs> please. Whenever, whenever you're asked about something, like the most appropriate response you can give for a question that you don't have an answer to is, I don't know that right now, but I will research it and get back to you. I will figure it out. Mm -hmm. We like to see that in my company. We're also goofballs in our interview process, though. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Our last interviewee, holy crap. Um, at meetups, I would say be more casual. Mm -hmm. If you're talking to people, be more casual. Yeah. Don't don't treat them like you're about to in, like you're in an interview. They kind of mm -hmm. want to see how you are in the real world before they pull you in and make you all sorts of nervous in an interview. So I like going to meetups and watching how you guys speak. Watching how I pay attention to all of you guys. <laughs> Sorry, kind of creepy, but I do. <laughs> I see how you guys interact with your friends. I see how you interact with the community around you. And I kind of take that into consideration when you are asking me for a job. And then I don't want you to come up to me and just start listing everything you know. Please don't do that. I do, I do know technical, but I'm not technical. So don't do that. Just come up, talk to, the, talk to them casually, ask them you know, what their company does, what all those things. But be casual about it when you're at a meetup. When you're in an interview, they will let you know how they want the interview to be conducted in within the first five minutes of you walking into the office. Always be aware of how it's going to be when you're walking into the office. Also, please do research on the company before mm -hmm. you walk in. I don't want to see you guys dressed up in a suit at my company when most of our guys are wearing <laughs> jeans and t-shirts. I also don't want you coming, I don't want to see holy jeans either, but I don't always dress up like this when I'm at my office. You know, Don't come in in a suit, because then it's we're worried that you might not fit into the culture as well. So each company is going to have a different culture fit, which we, we look for heavily. Uh, I know you guys do as well. 
<laughs> yeah, if you do wear a suit, I mean, be, be casual about it. Like, if you wear a suit and walk into an environment that's t-shirts and, and pants, be like, you know, I always, uh, I always like to be overdressed when I'm meeting somebody for the first time. Like, I, I, I really enjoy the style that you guys have around here. So you can communicate to them, like, I dig t-shirts and jeans. Like, that's great. Um, great a joke. Yeah. Honestly, if you're like, well, <laughs> I missed the memo on jeans and t-shirts today. You know, make a joke with that. I mean, I promise, as long as we know that you're comical and you're walking in with a suit when we're a really cool tech company, as long as you crack a joke and, yeah, exactly, mention yeah. that, you know, say something along those lines, then all of a sudden we don't feel as guarded and we don't immediately judge you that you <coughs> might give us a lawsuit in six months. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, though, regardless of what you're wearing, if you have an awesome mustache, it's, uh, it's yes. <laughs> and a bow tie. <laughs> and a bow tie, it helps you get any job. <laughs> I, I don't have a trademark on the mustache. Like um, if Josh wouldn't kill me, I would love to hire you. If Josh would me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know, that is the one thing about working somewhere you love. Like, there's always opportunities I hear about them. I was like, oh, that'd be a really cool challenge. But I love where I work, yeah. and I don't foresee leaving I'm in any time. Lie. I love my company, yeah. but I would love to work with you guys, too. I would. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So on that topic, actually, uh, we've been talking about how the community as a whole is pretty welcoming, overall helpful, accepting of people. Uh, students who haven't had too much experience, even talking with people in the community, they might still get those, those butterflies, those nerves, the starstruck moment when they walk into a certain office. Um, any tips for avoiding that when they're maybe walking into you know, the code schools, the tree schools, or, or tree school, tree house? <laughs> the tree schools. I mean, we're all about... One of you go out there and please start a tree school. Like, yeah. please. It's <laughs> <laughs> the third it. challenge of the night. <laughs> sure Greg and Ryan would both love that. <laughs> I, I'd say honestly, just just be yourself. Um, you know, we're all we're all people at the end of the day. Uh, we all have our quirks. We all have our personalities. Each of these companies, they all have their own culture fit. Uh, just get a sense for that. Find your. I always say, find your evangelist or find your champion of wherever company you're interested in, and you know that way it becomes a lot more. Uh, it's it's a lot more human process instead of like, oh my God, it's code school. It's like no, it's Greg. Like I know yeah. Greg. Um, Greg's a cool guy, right? And then it just it just makes it like instead of just being this awestruck celebrity, it's just another person that you grab lunch with, right? Yep. Um, and that's that's always kind of the advice that I give. Um, yeah, that's just me. Touching on what was said earlier, like the you know, it's not just that you're being interviewed; you're also interviewing the company. Keep that in mind. Like, it, you don't owe somebody you're interviewing anything. Like, it's just as important for you to decide: is this somewhere I want to work? As it is for them to decide. Are you someone they want to hire? Um, and always come prepared with questions. Like it's been touched on, like research before you go in an interview. Uh, know who you're talking to. Always come in with like we end every interview with. Uh, so what questions do you have for us? And we always make sure we make time for the people we're interviewing to ask us questions back. And uh, it's really disappointing, honestly, when you're interviewing someone. You're like, so what questions do you have for us? And they I was like. Eh, nothing it's like are you that. interested in this job like you know do you care about this company are you curious about us at all like you could ask us anything at all anything yeah. at all like uh it's throw me it's a curveball great yeah <laughs> um so come prepared with questions so you don't feel on the spot maybe yeah Not just I, I was interviewing somebody and they literally we asked them the question like so what questions do you have for us and he's like hold on and he pulled out his binder and he flipped open to a page he's like here's my list of questions <laughs> and uh that was maybe a little overwhelming but uh <laughs> yeah. it was great i really appreciated that he had done that so uh it was cool yeah i mean you're gonna meet a lot of us who are hiring at meetups and at events so that kind of helps the whole starstruck thing as well because yeah. you're literally gonna meet a lot of us. If you go to Orlando Tech, I'm pretty sure you're going to meet almost every single hiring company in Orlando at Orlando Tech Meetup. Pretty much. I mean, they come, they go there to, you know, obviously hear about awesome badass things that are, I had to say something. It's, it's killing me. Uh, <laughs> I cuss a lot. That's my, that's my MO. Um, I even cuss in my interviews. Uh, so <laughs> but you know, you're going to, you're, it helps with the starstruck thing. Like, <laughs> you are going to a meetup and you're going to be standing next to Orette. You're going to be standing next to Greg Pollock. You're going to be standing next to Matt. I'm, I'm not in that 
I'm not up there with you guys. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh, you're close. You flatter enough. me. You're Thank close you. Enough. Uh, you know, you're gonna be out, hanging out with all of us. You'll be standing next to somebody and you've no idea who they are, and they're probably the head of marketing at Bright House. And you're like, wait, I'm I'm really sitting next to this person. Oh, okay, we might love and hate them, but okay, you know, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> slightly slid that in there, but you know, it's. Don't be starstruck with us. We, at the end of the day, we're all Orlando. We're all awesome. We all love hiring and keeping Orlando in Orlando. Don't walk in and just be all, because huh, we're just like you. We really are. Yeah, it's okay to be nervous. Like, people get nervous when you go on interviews. Like, we know that as interviewers. Um, but I mean, it's also you know, confidence is sexy, and we don't care that you're quirky or weird. Be confident about your quirkiness or your weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> We're you know? all weird. Yeah. We all are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple of things that you touched on there. Uh, again, just a reinforce for those looking to stay in Orlando. Uh, Orlando is a big city, but it's still a small city. Um, like you all were saying, like you're pretty much two people away from meeting probably your next employer or somebody who can have a huge impact in your career. Um, do any of you have any stories personally that you've seen either happen or you know happen to you that you want to share? That through networking like that? Um, actually, quite a few. I got my, but I'll actually every job I've had in the tech community has all been from my networking efforts. I had a buddy of mine call me up and was like, I know you are really passionate about CoLab and helping these startups grow and all of this. He's like, but I have this really awesome opportunity. They asked me for a community manager and I think you would rock at it. And I know that you know you treat every company that you're at like you're, it's your baby, but you know I think you'd be really awesome at this and I'm gonna highly recommend you for this job. And then with, I've been at NeoReach for two weeks now. So NeoReach is my you know next little baby that I'm having fun with. And I got referred by another buddy of mine who was, you know, they were talking about how the company wants to keep its dev team here in Orlando. The, you know, the CEO and everybody's out in San Francisco for the investor side, but they really wanted to really grow their dev team. And he was like, the only person you need to talk to is Caitlin. No mm -hmm. joke is Caitlin. Yep. And we started talking and, and my role's an odd one. So it took a it took a good month and a half, but all through networking and me knowing people and me talking to people and chit-chatting, I've gotten jobs. I've also hired people out of that way as well. I'll have somebody, I'll be like, you know, I'm really hiring for this position and I really want somebody who's really good at these things. And they'll be like, I know this person. They're awesome. I've worked with them on this project. I've worked with them here. You know, I've seen their work. They're awesome. You need to call them up and I'll reach out to you. Be like, hey, you came recommended by this person kudos to you because now you're on top of my list mm -hmm. you know so it's that's why I really push all of you guys to go to meetups and attend those events because somebody's going to refer you for a position opening up or I'm gonna know you because you attended there and I hear from a buddy of mine going I'm hiring for this I'm gonna yank you and be like yo you need to go apply for this because they're hiring and they're an awesome company I will help you guys out with that as well. I, I think just kind of like that is like we are a really cool community. Like I've been humbled and awed by just how genuinely kind people in the tech community here in Orlando are. Um, and it's amazing. Like I, I like to, you know, when I look at, you know, every month at the people that show up to my meetup, I'm just like, this isn't my meetup, this is our meetup. Like, this wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for every single person that shows up. And we all care about each other, we all want each other to succeed, we want each other to, to do great things. So it's a, it's a really genuinely cool community. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it helped me out tremendously. As, as far as personal stories on networking, uh, I mentioned before that I had a little bit of trouble getting into the uh, tech community at first. One of the things that I did was my background has been PHP. I'm historically primarily a PHP developer. 
So when I started deciding to get involved in the community, I actually reached out to the, the former organizer of the Orlando PHP user group, which was a guy named David Rogers. Awesome. And Love yeah, well, everybody here loves David Rogers. He's pretty much an OG of the exactly of the tech community. Oh my god! Um, but I just I just sent him an email because he was the organizer of the group, and I asked him if he would be willing to have lunch with me, and he did. So we had lunch one day, and I started getting more involved in helping out uh, with organization inside the user group and. Uh, not all that long ago, like he was the front end engineering instructor at the Iron Yard. Um, not all that long ago, he relocated uh, to a different state uh, to take over. Yeah, we're all very sad about that. Um, but he relocated to a different state uh, to take over teaching that same course at a different campus. And when he left, he actually recommended that I take over his spot at the Iron Yard. And that was like one of the most I have never been so honored by anything ever in my life. Like that was to, to receive that kind of a recommendation from someone. And it all came from like just reaching out and having lunch one day and then just being helpful over the course of a couple of years. And it, it's, it's, you can do a lot for your career by yeah. just getting involved and being helpful and doing these kinds of things that we've been describing up here. Hey, I'll go to lunch. I'll go grab yeah. drinks with anybody. If you're like, yeah. hey, I want to get involved in this. Can, I, can we go grab a drink? Let's go. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I guess my personal story as well, too, is when I, I moved here four years ago and I wanted to do this event, uh, I attended a startup weekend in Tampa. I was blown away by the, <laughs> the, the event and wanted to do it here in Orlando. Didn't know anyone at all, and I just happened to go to a, a random event called Build Guild, and it was just a you know, networking social happy, uh, happy hour for developers. I remember Build Guild. Yeah, oh, so it's, a, it's yeah, and it, one of the first people I ran into was Greg Pollock. Hmm. Had no idea who this guy was. <laughs> Told him about this crazy event that I want to do, and he was like, hey, I might have a space for you, and brought me up to his office like the first day I met him, gave me a tour of code school and said, you know, we could do it up here if you wanted to do it, right? And uh, Greg from there like helped make connections for me, helped get connected to all the other kind of speakers and mentors. And I knew no one at the time in this community. Um, and literally like that was my entryway into this Orlando Tech community, it was going to a random event with this crazy idea, mm -hmm. meeting a handful of people that happened to point out, you know, like, hey, you should meet so-and-so, let me introduce you. And that's like how it all started, right? And that, that story happens all the time, oh, right? Yeah. Like that happens, I would say, almost every day. Like, and when we talk about like the accessibility and how open everyone is, like we really honestly mean that. And I think all of us here have personal stories of, of us coming in as you know, newbies to this community mm -hmm. and this community like embracing us with open arms. Um, I did that with you. Yeah. I went to Orlando Tech, started talking to you One Million Cups and a couple other things, and then from there it was just, yeah. hey, did you hear about this? Hey, did you hear about that? What about this? What about that? And that's so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting coffee tomorrow morning with somebody just to talk about UX. And that's an offer. It actually kind of terrifies me saying this <laughs> here because I have no idea how many people are watching online. But it's an offer <laughs> I've, I've extended it to everybody who comes no, to my meetup. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you ever want to talk about user experience, I, if I have a free morning, I will get coffee with you and talk yeah. about user experience for an hour. Like, I am such a user experience dork. Uh, you know, like, I just love it. I love talking about it, and I love uh, sharing anything that I can share and anything that I can teach anybody about it. Uh, I'm just so happy. And also, finding out what I can learn from you. Um, so, yeah, I, I love getting coffee with people. I just love helping people. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've... I've helped a lot of people get some jobs and they're, they've used their speaking opportunities to get jobs and they're like, hey, Caitlin, you know, do you know this company? And I'm like, yeah, don't go there. And they're like, awesome, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm telling them not to go there. <laughs> for, for those people who might not feel comfortable making that first step to go to a meetup and just you know, shake hands and meet people and would rather do something like this, send an email or you know, a tweet out to somebody, um, do you have any recommendations for how to handle that that communication with somebody they might not know? You can send a message just on Meetup. Like, even yeah. if you haven't come to the Meetup, you can still message me on Meetup. Um, if you send me a request on LinkedIn, or if you send anybody a request on LinkedIn, put, there's a little box where you can type. 
If you've met somebody them. before, <laughs> we don't probably remember you. Yeah. I'm terrible with names. And uh, so just type like, names. hey, I met you or I saw you speak or whatever. Um, or like, I haven't met you, but I'd love to grab coffee sometime. Or this is why I'm connecting with you on LinkedIn. Because otherwise, I'll just hit X. I don't know. I, I mean, I, there's just so many people. Like, if you just say anything at all, I'll probably accept uh, you know, a request. It's just, yeah. I just don't know who you are. I won't. <laughs> I've, uh, I, I personally, like, so my, my role, like, as executive director of Orlando Tech is very community focused, right? And so I've literally made my Tuesdays my office hours. Like, I don't get any work done on Tuesdays because I know I'm having meetings and I have an open calendar invite. If anyone wants to meet with me on Tuesday and grab coffee, like, let's do that. Um, and that's just something I've set up in my personal calendar to do so. Like, that's my role. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's an open invite. So those of you that are in the crowd online, um, I'm gonna regret that later. But, <laughs> but but yeah, it's um, open office hours. Like, and we'll grab coffee. And if we've got to do a group coffee session, like I'll do a group coffee session. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. in the spirit of really bad ideas, I I also. <laughs> I also had this same open invitation that everybody is talking about. Um, I'm, I've, my, actually, the rest of this week is completely booked for me because I've already scheduled uh, a whole bunch of people to do lunch and coffee and stuff to talk about mostly career advice. Um, and that's kind of been my big thing lately. If you're, if you're in the Orlando Dev Slack, there's a career advice channel in there, and I'm probably one of the most active people in there. That's an understatement. <laughs> that is an understatement. I, uh, I actually recently wrote a novel in there about the way to approach the job hunt process okay. that I believe is still in there. So if you want to sign up there and go read that, that's I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, no, I'm same open invitation. If you want to grab lunch, coffee, anything, like um, I will find a way to slot you into my schedule. Yeah, I mean, I allow anybody to reach through Slack, through me. Mm -hmm. um, I give my email out ridiculously, and I also allow anybody, if they wanted to, they can add me on Facebook as well. Uh, it's private, but if you add me and you're like, hey, I'll, I'll accept you. Like, I, I leave that for open just because I post a lot of, not just events that I do, but other events. Like, I blast everything Orlando Tech on my Facebook and everything else as well. And so I do that so you guys have another avenue to you know, be able to see things. I don't have my own Twitter. I don't really know if I'm going to do that, but <laughs> we'll see. Who knows? I keep bouncing around that idea. But I mean, most of us, if you're just like, hey, I just want to grab coffee or I just want to you know, talk about this, I mean, be a little bit more specific about what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, hey, I want to talk. Oh shit! What do you want to talk about? Like, <laughs> uh oh, what did you hear? What did you see? Yeah. Oh great! No, I don't want that. If you're like, hey, I want to talk about this one thing. Sure, why not? You know, I mean, I'm pretty good at being able to look through people's portfolios and their reviews, and I know another side of, you know, the tech industry that not everybody else really knows. And I've ripped through some people's portfolios, and I apologize. I have no filter. And I, you know, I'm very honest. And so a lot of people really appreciate that about me because if they ask me for advice, I'm going to tell them exactly how it is. And it's, you know, I won't hurt your feelings. Like, I'll be nice. But I well. will tell you if something sucks. <laughs> So I'm going to come back to that. Real quick, if I can, a, 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 a couple of points for contacting busy people for people unlike us that don't have open invitations. Um, when you're, when you're reaching out to someone, be concise. Don't go on and on and on about what you do or what you want to talk about or anything like that. The optimum number of decisions that you can make me make in a single email is one. Um, so don't ask me to do more than one thing in a single uh, communication. And try to be very, very specific about your ask. Um, if you want me to come out for coffee, you need to say, hey, I, wanna, I, I want like 15, 30, 45 minutes of your time on X date. Um, to do to talk about X subject, this is what I want, and just just don't don't be too kind of aggressive. Be desperate. Yeah, don't be, don't desperate. be desperate. Don't be aggressive. <laughs> just be very concise, to the point. Have a very specific ask because if you if you structure your email in a way or your message in a way where the best possible answer I can give you is one word and it's yes or no, you've done it right. That's that's basically my advice. <laughs>
So on the topic of uh, reaching out to people, um, something that is important to understand, you've heard them all make the joke of, this is a horrible idea, telling everybody online to reach out to me. Um, make sure you're reaching out to them where they are. Um, I've made the mistake, I think we all have probably made the mistake where I might email them or sent a Facebook chat and then I never heard back. I don't know if I made them upset or they just didn't want to talk to me. No, they just don't check that type of message. Um, is there anything that you want to recommend down that route of where where to find people or better communicate with people through a certain tool? I Follow mean, up. <laughs> sometimes it's it's you know sometimes we just get really swamped. Like all of us do have full time jobs and do these meetups and community organizing. So we are busy people, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, we have flexibility to be able to offer to you guys. I'm okay if you, I mean, don't send me a novel on every avenue you can possibly reach me to, but if you're like, hey, I messaged you on here two days ago, I didn't hear anything back, I'm reaching out to you through this avenue, hoping that I can get a hold of you. I will totally be okay with the fact that you just reached out to me through three different avenues. Totally okay with that. Have zero problem with that at all. Not everybody is okay with that, though. Usually give... If it's not anything urgent, usually give 24 to 48 hours. Don't just all of a sudden, if I see you've got a few minutes in between every single avenue, all right, I'm just, no, I'm not going to sit down with you because you're going to take on my whole entire day. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's tough for every single person. I mean, I'm okay with you guys reaching out to me through different avenues, but that's just because I know technology has a habit of not cooperating. <laughs> so, and I'm also well, knowing that I'll look at something, forget I looked at it, and then keep going on about my day, and then all of a sudden I'm like, Shh, crap, I forgot about this. <laughs> One thing that I can say from a lot of experience and like trying to reach out to lots of different busy people is the vast majority of the time, if you send something to someone and you don't get a response, it has less to do with you than it does to, with them. They just either don't have the time, they didn't see your message, uh, things of that nature. It's not necessarily that you did anything wrong yeah. as much as it has to do with the fact that they are just very busy. So, and, and, and that's why I said, like, try to make, you, you want to lower, like, the cognitive load of your message. Like, make it so you're not asking me to do too much and make it so the things that you're asking me to do are very specific. Do, do you guys ever deal with email guilt? Like you what? didn't get back to a message, and now it's been two days, and you're like, oh, yeah. but it's been no. so long, and now I have to apologize for getting back to so long. Like, I've nope. had to do yeah. that so yeah. many times. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm really sorry. I've, I've gotten over it, but a lot of people struggle with it. I know my wife does a lot, and a lot of people message her, and she'll like not respond to somebody because she feels guilty that she hasn't responded to them yet. Oh, no, I'll respond And so that happens. Here. I'll call myself out. I'll be like, <laughs> you know yeah. what? I read this. I should have messaged. I have a habit of that. I'm like, yeah. I read it. That is my fault. Totally should have just responded right when I read it instead of putting my phone down and <laughs> running around with my head chopped off like I always do. And yeah. Yeah. And you always know where to find us in person too. Come to our meetups. Yeah. Yeah. If we haven't gone back to you, you'll be like, hey, did you see my message? And we'll be like, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and then it'll be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can be like, hey, I messaged you the other day. I'm going to look at you and be like, Say a few words I'm not going to say right now. All right, <laughs> what was it? Let's go. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, we started to talk about earlier was uh, getting your work out in front of people. And this could be in the form of presenting, or it could be just, here's a link, go check out this project I made. Uh, we heard the message earlier of, there's no filter sometimes with those types of critiques. Um, do you have any input on how to handle those harsh critiques with the, you know, we're all trying to help. So sometimes it gets a little hard. Um, I will throw a different reference in for this. I'm in school for architecture, although I'm stopping my degree because it has absolutely nothing to do with what I love to do now. <laughs> in architecture, you have to literally have no attachment to your projects because if you have any emotional attachment, you will walk out of a crit completely burned to the ground. And you might still get an A on that project. But you're being crit by architects who have been practicing for 25 years. And they look at your model. I'm, this is exactly what happened to my final in my last semester. They looked at my model, congratulated me on my craft, looked at my drawings, and went, what happened? 
because I had drawings that were months ago and I never had time to go back and fix them. And well, you still have to present all your work. And he's literally looking at my model and looking at my drawings and he's like, I don't see the disconnect. He goes, I don't get it at all. Like this looks like a complete pile of crap. He goes, I would have preferred you not to put this up there. And I'm just standing there, mind you, I have 20 other students that are standing there, my professor, and two more crits I have to listen to. You can't, I, I mean, it's your work, it's your baby, I get it. But you have to be able to take criticism with a grain of salt, you really do. You have to be able to sit there and be like, okay, I get what you're saying. Now, if there's something you wanna argue on, please don't get super offensive, because I want you to debate me. I want to hear your rebuttal. But don't be all, all of a sudden I'm a big ugly bear because you just ripped this apart. No, I have reasons for ripping it apart. But I want to know why you did what you did. Defend your work. Don't come back and get all angry at me. And again, we're helping you out. We're looking at it as a way, I mean, I can look at your portfolio because we look for certain things to hire. If I don't see them, I'm going to tell you I don't like I don't see them. And if you have a reason for it, then okay. Another big thing that people, and I'm, this is going to be a side note for hiring, please don't ever say you didn't have time. Oh, man. <laughs> don't ever say that, because I'm crazy. I work a lot, and I have school, and I have meetups, <laughs> and I still find time to get done what I need to have done. I mean, my model took 40 hours to do, and I did that while running meetups. Don't ever say you don't have time to an interviewee, if they're like, hey, how come you didn't do this side of project? Because I'm gonna ask you that. I like open source. If I haven't seen it, I'm gonna ask you why you haven't done it. Please don't tell me you didn't have time. You always have time. <laughs> if you're passionate about it, you will have the time to do it. Um, so, but don't get mad at me, because I just chewed you out for not, for giving me that example. Just literally take that and be like, all right, I gotta figure out my priorities. What is, what should I take away to have more time to do said things? Because this might help me get hired in the end. So don't, I promise we're not trying to be mean to you guys. It's, <laughs> it's this, I sound really mean, but I'm in school for architecture. They're really mean to me. Like, I can't tell them I have 40 hours of a job and I run meetups and I help organize other events. They're looking at me going, and? Just don't sleep. <laughs> all I right. Mean. So at this time, um, well, thank you for all that, by the way. <laughs> um, we're going to start taking questions. Um, so in a few minutes, uh, we're going to have somebody walking around to the audience uh, with a microphone. So if you raise your hand and we get a question from you, please wait for the microphone to come to you so that everybody online can also hear the question. Um, and if you are online joining us, uh, we have a moderator. Uh, so please share your questions there also. Um, so questions. I oh, got one in the front row. We like questions, ask them. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, you, all, all of your information has been like really, really helpful. Um, I also want to uh, get more involved uh, with the tech community here in Orlando, so my question goes uh, to that. I'm an international student. Um, is that gonna be like uh, a hindrance or something like that to get involved into this? Mm. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so at all. And there's plenty of opportunities to get, in, to get involved, to volunteer, uh, help organize, or, or, or what have you. Um, so I, 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 yeah, there's just plenty of, we, we all need plenty of help, let's put it that way. So, like there's no, so there's no problem like trying to present something because of that? No, no not at all. We had so four Brazilian speakers yeah. Oh, yeah. at our That's last meetup. Uh, um, yeah. No. Same thing here. Our, our tech meetup demos, we've had a Brazilian company. We had a company from the Netherlands. <laughs> we've had literally companies from all over the world come in and demo with us and participate with us. Like, so um, we are a platform for showing off cool things that are happening. And uh, it doesn't matter where that's, where that's at. month of the mobile development program. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and uh, I have no experience in coding or anything like that. So I'm just wondering, 
what resources are out there that I should take advantage of to give myself a head start and to make sure I get like the most out of this uh, education at full sale that I can? I would say join on Slack. They might overwhelm you a little bit, but join ODEVs if you're in there. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. Everybody's willing to help. We have an Android and an iOS channel. Uh, we even have a Java channel as well. Uh, probably even Objective-C and who knows what else on there. Join in there, ask questions on anything. Uh, also, you can attend. So there is an Orlando Android and an Orlando iOS meetup group. Uh, they're all run by Echo and Andrew Koslick. So he's on Slack. He <laughs> loves to troll people, so I will forewarn you. He loves making jokes. Uh, <laughs> but just attending the events, again, they might be over your head, but I still encourage you to go because then you can ask somebody a question about a project that you have. And another thing for you to be able to get more education, learn yourself as well. So if you're intrigued on something, go look into it. Don't wait for us to tell you. Don't wait for your instructor to tell you. Go look into it. As long as you don't overwhelm yourself to where you're, you're doing bad in either your personal projects or your school projects, go for it. I mean, the Slack channel allows you to ask any question whatsoever. You can literally be like, I am a beginner in this particular field. What, I like doing this. How do I do this? Don't ask what should I do next, because we're all gonna have all five million different answers. <laughs> yeah, start a side project. I mean, whether it's an open source project or getting involved with Code for Orlando, yeah. they're writing mobile apps. You can get involved with a team writing mobile apps just on the side. I know you guys have pretty crazy schedules, so definitely don't overwhelm yourself, <laughs> but uh, I mean, those are all great things that you can do. And I'd add on, on to that as well, too. In addition to doing the side projects and getting, getting involved, um, you know, use the people that are involved with these groups as resources to be mentors, right? So if you do an open source project, you can tap into someone from Code School or any of these companies to be your mentor, right? And then at the end of it, at the end of you know, three months or whatever, whatever the timeline is, you have someone that's already involved with the community that can write you a really stellar recommendation. Right. I know quite a few mobile developers that if you're willing to do the work and you're willing to actually give a crap, they will help you out. Yeah. They will answer any questions that you absolutely have. You just have to care. So, right. Some more generalized advice for people that are just starting out and are interested in getting involved in maybe like open source or something to help their career. Uh, some recommendations that I commonly give people is get involved with helping projects with things like documentation. Um, things that aren't necessarily code related while you're coming up and ramping up on uh, learning the actual mobile development aspect of things. Because if you can get into a project and understand it well enough to document it, eventually you're going to be able to understand it well enough to also contribute to it. And then you'll have open source contributions that you can point to as part of like a job interview process or whatever so that you can have just something, some type of public body of work to give as a reference of this is what I'm capable of. Uh, uh, sidebar there, just for some of our students who might be completely new to development world, could you expand a little bit on what open source projects are? Oh, geez. <laughs> um, so if you're, if you're completely brand new, I guess the really quick primer on open source is that there, there exists uh, amongst the internet a ton of different types of communities for different types of things where uh, development on projects just happens out in the open. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with sites like GitHub, uh, you should be. Uh, sign up for a GitHub account, get on, uh, get on there, just kind of search through GitHub and try to find projects that are inside your technology domain, uh, if it's mobile development, if it's web development, whatever. Um, there's going to be all sorts of projects out there that are going to love to have additional contributors. Um, most open source projects are a little difficult to break into sometimes. But if you, if you get in there and you can be helpful with things like documentation or bug fixes or uh, even just testing, like a lot of these projects are run by people that have a passion about a specific thing. So they build something to fill that passion and then there's a little bit of a gap in things like testing or documentation or design. Um, if you're interested in UX design or UI design, a lot of these open source projects are going to need a lot of love and things like that. So uh, tons, tons of opportunity to contribute just to have that public body of work 
that I referred to before. <coughs> awesome. So there's got to be more questions. We're, we've got one right here. Okay. Um, I was wondering, don't worry, I'm not actively looking, but um, how is the uh, venture capital angel investment in the Orlando area? <laughs> we were hoping that question would get popped up. Uh, great question. Um, I still say that, that that is definitely one of the challenges that we face here in the Orlando market, um, and at Florida in, in general as well, too. Uh, there have been several firms that have uh, kind of come on, come on scene over the last couple of years, uh, but they're really, you know, in terms of the smart money, as you would call it, venture capital scene here in Orlando, there are th three primarily, three big players. Uh, you have Arsenal Venture Partners, you have the Florida Angel Nexus, which is a group of angel investors, and then you have Venvelo are the three primary, um, you know, kind of venture capital angel groups here locally. And one of the, I think one of the most exciting projects in the works right now is the um, Fire Spring Fund. And so this is an early stage seed fund. Uh, it's an evergreen nonprofit fund that's being set up right now um, that is meant to invest in early stage startup companies. And so that, that fund is directly involved with Starter Studio. And so Starter Studio is a three-month accelerator program that's here in Orlando that's, uh, that's tied very closely within Canvas, the co-working space. And they take people from, I, from you know, just past uh, MVP to like the first sets of customer validation. Um, and that really is the landscape here in terms of the Orlando market. And then you, when you look at Miami, Tampa, uh, Jacksonville, there's some other activity going on there as well too. Uh, but in terms of the funding landscape, it's primarily Central and South Florida are the, the two uh, primary sources. So yeah. Just a little side note on that too. I just saw something shared the other day that Florida, the state of Florida is number three when it comes to the percentage of venture capitalists or startup funds. Um, this is after New York, San Francisco, and then Florida shows up. So yeah. it's a good spot to be. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's definitely something that's changing and, and kind of rising. Um, and there's been some very strong movement over the last couple of years. Yeah, great, great question. Cobwebs five years ago, really. Yeah. So it's, I mean, the growth is there, and it's cool. It'll be cool to see where it's at in three more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, I mean, we've got reps here from companies that have raised millions of dollars in funding, right? So Matt at Power DMS, they've raised close to $6 million in funding. New York Reach has raised close to two, if not more. Um, so there's definitely funding opportunities available here. There are definitely high-growth companies that are raising funding. Uh, you look at Fat Merchant, you know, they $850,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on. So it's not like Orlando is this dead zone. Like, there's definitely activity here um, in funding. I mean, uh, we've got one up here. Yeah, she has the next one. Uh, first off, thank you guys. Um, if you're wanting to present at um, any of the meetups around here, how important is it to do like a live demo? Because um, I've seen them and then I haven't seen them and it's either like hit or miss. For first time presenters, don't. Yeah, um, live demos are extremely difficult and even the pros fail at them spectacular, spectacularly, um, very frequently. Um, I don't recommend it. If you can pre-record a demo ahead of time and include it as part of your presentation, that would be uh, my recommendation. Uh, for us, that is a requirement, is we want live demos, and we, we, we're very strong advocates for that. Um, and the reason why is we, we, we want to, there are plenty of opportunities to do pitches or to do presentations. Like, we want to see, like, what what's your product, hardware, software, doesn't matter what it look like, looks like out in the wild and in the hands of your customers. And the best way for us, at least, to do that is live. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, if you practice enough and you feel confident about it, then go for it. But don't just whip that sucker up the night before. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't do that. I've, I've not had some odd demos at my meetups. I've had yeah. drones and some other stuff. and. Don't. That's not something you do the night before. Oh yeah, that's true. Sergio did that one where he flew a drone with JavaScript. That was uh, and it went amazing. into the, the first one went into the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two different drone demos. Orlando JS last night had uh, a coffee pot powered by JavaScript. That was pretty fun. Yeah, and he's a rookie. I mean, it, you know, that was his first live demo, and I mean, and as it long went as you really do it, well. you, you got to practice it for sure. You really like, do. You need Use hardware. Be prepared for that thing to not work. You I might think, have to do a live demo or do I a recorded demo. I think Tyler said that he's spent, what, five weeks on that? 
just getting it well, to was like three to five weeks getting it was a lot ready. of rerouting yeah. and working don't go crazy like that but if you want to live demo code just practice it yeah constantly practice it i mean I'm not, we're not going to say no you can't do it i'm not going to tell you you can't do it but for like <laughs> de like for developer focus meetups it's i wouldn't recommend it as a first time presenter but it's definitely impressive when it works mm -hmm. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you all so much for your questions. Um, thank you all so much for coming out. Uh, let's show a round of appreciation for Matt, Caitlin, Orit, and Jeremy. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>